I am back with Ross Benjamin to take a look at some winning picks tonight for the total run lines. Cubs and Mets at City Field, Hendricks and Nice are on the hill with two struggling offenses behind them. This is a tough call for me with the total at seven here. I trust neither one of these pitchers really. Nice is rough at home. Hendricks struggles on the road with their stat line. It just screams over to me. However, neither team is hitting right now. Mets are averaging two runs over their last 11 and the Cubs two and a half over that same span. Now combined with Nice at least looking a little bit better lately, I'm going to take a small lean to the under here. Yeah, I'm going to have a small lean on the under as well. I do agree with you, Matt. I mean, yeah, you you, you just brought up the fact that neither team is hitting, and that's an understatement, uh, hitting of late anyway. Uh, the Mets have gone 6-1 and one under the total in their previous seven, 11-2 and two under the total in their last 13 games. They've scored two runs or less in each I'm sorry, that's six of their last seven and nine of their last 11 games. And this is a Mets pitching staff that is also allowed two runs or less in each of their previous four games. And you mentioned Jonathan Neese, uh 3.15 ERA in his last three starts after having a terrible beginning to the year. So that's encouraging from a Mets standpoint. And then the Cubs, 7-1-1 one, and one under the total during their previous nine games. This team has scored two runs or less in each of their last six. And this looks like an opportune time for uh, the Cubs starter Hendricks to right the ship considering Tuesday's opponent in the Mets is hitting just 183 as a team over their last seven games. Again, a very small lean for me. Cubs and Mets under seven. All right, sounds good. Moving on to the next. We are in Toronto where the Red Sox are in town to take on Marco Estrada and the Blue Jays. Now, Estrada's been neon untouchable lately, taking consecutive no-hitters into the eighth inning. Rodriguez, on his side, has been doing a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde routine. He's seen his ARA, ERA shoot up to four. Again, another tough call here with Estrada's recent dominance and Rodriguez's recent trend, suggesting perhaps a bounce back. I am again leading for the under of this game at nine. Yeah, I mean, it almost looks too good to be true with this total being so high and what you've just brought up. So I'm going to disagree on this one. I, I just think when it looks that easy, it's normally not. And this is going to be the case for me this evening. Uh, Eduardo Rodriguez, 982 ERA, 171 whip in all three games went over the total in his last three starts. His one start versus the Blue Jays this season was an absolute nightmare. He allowed nine earned runs on eight hits while walking two in just four and two-thirds innings of work. And Toronto has really dominated southpaw starting pitchers like they'll face this evening. Uh, they've averaged 6.6 .6 runs per game and hit a robust 299 as a team versus lefty starters. They also averaged 5.6 runs per game at home this season and possess a outstanding slugging percentage at the Rogers Center in Toronto of 476. You know, again, both of these starting pitchers, when they faced their tonight's opponent, struggled the first time around. As a matter of fact, uh, I failed to mention Estrada and his one star versus Boston, five earned runs on seven hits and just five innings of work. I'm going to lean toward this one going over the number. Just looks too easy to go the other way. And the books just don't give money away, Matt. Red Sox and Blue Jays over nine. Yeah, Ross, you know, I don't totally disagree with that pick. When things go bad for Rodriguez, they go really, really bad. That, that total number of nine can creep up real fast. I want to thank you for those picks, and we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow for more over-under winners.